Okay, if you can go ahead and select, I got it. Let me know that this is being recorded. So we are now ready to go over our top-down analysis for the week for July 17th. Um, today, um, well, we just came in through Sunday. So technically today is a bank holiday for Japan. So we're not expecting a lot of volume out of Japan. So Japan is not participating. That doesn't mean the Japanese yen isn't moving, but today is a bank holiday, just to let you know, for Japan. So for today, we had nothing really going on through um, London session. We got G20 meetings. Looks like it's going to probably be uh, an all-week G20. And if you guys are trying to understand what's G20, G20 is the uh, meeting are attended by finance ministers and central banks from 20 industrial nations. So it's going to be a lot of nations in here. And they just come in, they meet, they look at their policies, and they talk about what's going on in their countries, and that's about it. So we may have some impact on, on currency, but, you know, nothing to, to be alarmed. But just to be aware that that is happening. Um, today, we have USD News at 8.30. So that will move the currencies around 8.30 uh, for Empire State Manufacturing. And then at 9.30, you got the Monetary Policy Meeting Minutes. So that might move Australian dollar currency a little bit, depending on how bad or how good the uh, the comments are, how, how, how hawkish or how... How Dovis. Okay. And Tuesday, this week we got uh, CAD CPI and then we got core retail sales for um for USD. Again, um, anytime you see USD red folder, that's also including any USD crosses and of course anything for gold and indices related. Okay. Um, and then we got NCD's uh, CPI uh, during Asian session. And on Wednesday, uh, so far we have no bank rate decision so far. On Wednesday, we have employment change for Australia. That's going to impact the currency at 9.30 for Australia. So if you're in any odd trade, get ready to experience some um, some movement volatility for Australia. I'm sorry, before that, during London session, we have a pound reported in the CPI data. Okay. And then on Thursday, we got U.S. unemployment claims reporting. Um, and that's it. Nothing else for the rest of the week. So there is no bank rate decisions this week. So that means every day is a trade day opportunity. Um, let me see. On Wednesday, we do have crude oil inventory on Wednesday. So that'll move crude oil uh, around 1030. Okay. Other than that, every day is going to be a trading opportunity this week, which is good. So nothing crazy, nothing um, insane. Um, other than you're going to have some currencies that's going to be moving. Um, like on, like I said, on Tuesday you got Canada, that's going to be moving. Um, Wednesday, uh, well, I could say Tuesday night, New Zealand dollar. Wednesday night will be. Um, Australian dollar, London CPI, yeah, the inflation, the inflation data, data move the currency, and then Thursday, um, USD, that's about it. So nothing else on that. Okay, right now in terms of currency strength at this moment, even though we have nothing going on right now during London session, as we get ready to get into New York session, um, let's see the status of the currencies. And right now, it looks like Japanese yen is is hot right now. So the high, even though we don't have <laughs> no Japan bank uh, participants in it right now, um, that, that like I said, that doesn't mean the currency is not moving and not trading. So Japanese yen is. Is, is right now being traded high. Obviously, we have London's and, and New York volume still pushing, right? Um, so Japanese yen is up. Switch France is up. 
So that means those two currencies for French JPY should be a little bit and slightly ranging, if not looking a little bearish, okay? Other than that, everything Japanese yen against everything else is just dropping. Um, so I'm assuming NCD and odd JPY is falling. Um, pound JPY should be, should be dropping as well. Um, let me look at pound JPY. I think I had a trade on pound JPY. Let me check on that. I did, and I believe it came off. <clears throat> it came off. Because I had my stop loss there. Yep, so my pound JPY six positions came off. And I'm currently um, not in that trade, other, uh, other than I got the five. I got the five positions there. It came up. It must have came up yesterday. Um, that was on Friday. So I'll be looking to get into that particular currency again for another reset or reload. I mean, if not, uh, that's fine. Uh, I'll add to it later. Okay. Um, we got dollar in the middle, but we definitely got Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar weak. So let's get into it. Let's just straight with the dollar. Okay, I hope you can see my charts. Um, I'm looking at the dollar index last week with, um, let's see what we had last week news. I think we had the, I think it was uh, CPI. Yep, so we had CPI on Wednesday. We had PPI on Thursday and those two were enough to really plummet the dollar. It had just pounded that dollar. The dollar just took off. Um, this was on Monday. Let's see, this was uh, right here. That was Friday last week. That was the week, the week prior, sorry. Friday the week prior, that was um, unemployment claims. That was on July 20, um, Friday the 7th. So, there you go. So on July 7th, we had non-farm payroll, right? Yep. So on July 7th, we had non-farm payroll. That dropped the currency, and then the week after we had CPI and then PPI, and it just kept dropping, right? And that's why we are now bearish as we have crossed this line here. We are looking for at least a 50% pullback to this equilibrium here. And I would expect to see the dollar go back just a little bit. And then we're going to go bearish, right? So until we take out this high, I'm not bullish. So if we are looking to take this trade, we should be looking to, if we, we're going to go long, which mm, we could. Right now is a good opportunity. I'd rather go long here for a scalp. You know, in other words, we'll be uh, shorting you a dollar, pound dollar, or look for, you know, go to go um, week short term, which I'm perfectly okay with that. I think this is a better opportunity to do it now um, while you're catching a good pullback 
um, or expecting to get pulled back. And then we'll be get ready to go short on dollar. And I'm looking for the dollar to come lower to here. Uh, we do have FOMC rate decision next week. And in that rate decision, let's take a look at this. I think we're still positive. 96.1 for the interest rate to still continue to go up. Yep, so 96.1. So this looks like where um, the Feds will continue to raise interest rate the week after. Oh, yeah, this is saying that if they don't raise it in July, there's an 83% probability they'll raise it in September. And then obviously this goes lower and lower each of the two remaining session. Yep, it doesn't look like we're gonna go any higher than what we are right here from 5.25 to 5.50, okay? So we're still gonna raise interest rates and that's going to cause a little bit of strength. So that means we may be ranging around here, but I do expect this to pull back. If it doesn't go at least 50%, it'll come back here. I doubt if it's take that high and then we'll, we'll be rolling to roll back, roll back down. Now, if we do take out this high, then, well, it looks like we may be coming back up here to this high, to this high, but that's about as high as I think it's going to go and then come back down unless there's something, just other ge non, uh, you know, geopolitical reason for the dollar to be um, strong longer than we're expecting. But other than that, it's creating lower lows. It did break this low right here. This is exactly what we're looking for. And it, once it broke that to sell side liquidity, that was it. That was enough for us to say, okay, we're done. We're done thinking about the dollar being bullish here. It didn't take out this high. It didn't take out this high. In fact, we dropped in during lower. And all we know now, we're just looking for a pullback. And we're going to go short. So again, short term bullish. And then we're going to go short. Let's look at gold. Yep. So gold did pull back. Um, you know, at the dollar drop, this did pump up, but it, all it did, it just went to the supply, supply level here. So I am looking for gold to drop. So this is a good opportunity to consider um, looking to go bearish on gold. Gold doesn't look to be ready to go long. And then once we go here, I'll be looking for uh, the dollar to, well, the dollar strength. I'll continue to see the dollar strength to go here. And then after the FOMC make rate, make, make this, make your decision interest rate, um, then we'll probably expect after that gold start getting strong and the dollar start getting bearish again. Now, if dollar continues to get strong, then I expect it to go lower and lower. Okay. So uh, British pound, Looking on a daily, I expect this to be corrected, right? I expect this to come down to its equilibrium. I'm still holding right here on this on this daily supply level. So I do expect pound, dollar, and British pound, yen, um, not British pound, yen, but British pound um, index to hit that low, this equilibrium right here. I'm going to bring this up. There you go. Hmm. Interesting right there. So I do expect that to happen. And I do still expect this to come down to this area somewhere here. Um, I'm not sure if we'll come all the way down here, but this area right here looks very, very promising. So I got this equilibrium on this one right about there. This rebalance and this rebalance here hasn't changed much. And then it's right there. That's if price continue to go this low. Um, that is a possibility, but for sure, I'm looking for a pound to get just beat up. So this week, CPI and things like that, that might be an opportunity for 
Australia uh, for British Pound to continue its bearishness. So it's already starting to make that dip right there. I like it on a four hour time frame, starting to make that dip. I like it. I just want to continue to see it, you know, continue to go down. So I am expecting British Pound to continue to go down. Okay. Look at Switch France index real quick. Index for Switch France, Switch France, which is on fire last week. And it just created all this imbalance. That's all it did. Created all this imbalance. Now I'm expecting um, Switch France this week. There's no interest rate decision for Switch France. So there's no other reason, no other catalyst that I can consider why Switch France will continue to be, you know, strong. Look how, look how high it is already. It's based on the weekly chart. It's it's as high as back when it was um, damn near 2015, right? So it already exceeded the previous high of December 2020. Well, above that, we haven't rebalanced since um, since we went long here yeah. on November 20th, uh, 2022. This right here didn't even go all the way to 50%, this didn't even go 50%. So we're in the stretch to still hit this particular equilibrium right here. So I am expecting Switch Frank to have a big fall here all the way down to this level, okay? So Switch France, I'm looking to be bearish on Switch France. Europe, uh, Euro, yep, same thing. As British Pound, I'm looking for this to be rebalanced. Don't know if it'll come all the way down here. It'd be nice, but I doubt if we'll see um, British, I don't know, Euro come all the way down to 105 again. I doubt that. However, there is a great possibility that we will see 108. Okay. So I'm bearish on Euro, just like with the pound. So I'm expecting a little bit of pullback, a little bit of downfall on Euro dollar, just like the pound dollar. Um, Canadian dollar did come up to our strength. So I am going to be looking for a little bit of weakness on the Canadian dollar coming back down a little bit. Um, so I'm bearish and it's already starting to be bearish now. You see where it's starting to come down. Canadian dollar is weak today. It's the third weakest currency. So I am expecting a little bit of CAD weakness. Okay, Australian dollar is weak, um, which is fine. I'm expecting a little bit of pullback. Not that much, but a little bit, maybe about to this, this level here. Not going to be all the way down to this level, so that's a good thing. So British pound, I mean Australian dollars to about this level here, and then we're ready to take off, right? So this is only going to be because of the dollar strength that's coming up. So that's going to, you know, obviously push Australian dollar. Same thing as New Zealand dollar. I expect New Zealand dollar to be pulled back a little bit, um, maybe about to this level here. It already broke out of this trend here, which is good. So I am expecting a little bit of pullback. I didn't expect this, this strength here. That was great. But I am expecting a little bit of pullback and then go strong. Japanese yang is looking really, really good. Um, I did expect a pullback, though, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get it, but this right here, it's just extremely, extremely long, um, so we got to get at least a 50% some way, some way, somehow, right, so this is what I'm looking for, okay, so I am expecting a little bit of pullback, if if the Japanese yen to continue to go strong here, then all that does is just increases our equilibrium level here. But I am expecting 
a, a little bit of a collection and then go along, right? Patches equilibrium. So we are bullish on onion. This was a nice bullish push. This broke structure at, at a highest level, which is great. On a four hour level, it broke this structure, but I was really, really inclined for this structure break here. And it did that. So it gave us that break of structure. So yen, I'm bullish on yen. I'm going to our currencies. Let's go to indices real quick. Let's take a look. Um, indices is at the supply level here. So with dollar expected strength, I am expecting this to pull back, right? about this level here. So we are in a premium area. Um, obviously I went long earlier today, lost the trade, but I was, I was scalping, right? So when you're scalping, you can go either way, but from a, from a long trade perspective, you definitely want to be in looking to short, um, I'm looking for a rebalance from, uh, let's say from here to about right there. And get this out of the way. Okay, so I'm looking for S&P 500 as we were creating higher highs, higher lows, obviously this is way up here at a 90 weekly level. I'm looking for a pullback to about um, 4,200. And then that's gonna be with the dollar strength and the upcoming um, FOMC rate decisions on the rate increase come down. And then that's it. We're going, we're going to go be going through the rules. Okay, let's look at oil real quick. Oil was looking bullish. It's great. Kind of give us a pullback, retest. I'm looking for a retest of there and keep going. Okay. So I'm bullish on oil. Look at Bitcoin real quick. Bitcoin is ranging in this level here as it moved from the as high as 31.8 in this range and as low as 29.4, right? So I am still continuing to look for the 40,000, so I'm still bullish on um, Bitcoin. Bitcoin may take a little bit of a dip, may come all the way up here to about, you know, close to 26 possible. Uh, but after that, I don't see it dropping below 26.2. And then after that, it's just going to keep going. So if it dips, let's continue to buy or hold. All right, let's get into the forex pairs real quick. Your dollar, I'm bearish. I'm looking for a bird. Uh, <laughs> it's just your dollar. Come down, baby. Come down right there um i like it to come down at 105 i'm not sure if it will but at least i know it'll come down to 108 um 105 will be nice um again if i'm sh if i'm bearish on euro that means i'm expecting your dollar to come down right i'm gonna go ahead and clone this swing level here right at a key supply area there. I'm looking for this to drop to about 1.08 to as low as 1.05. And that's about far as I see it going. And then we're going to be taking off. Okay. So your dollar, I'll be looking to short your dollar, pound dollar, short.
look at the C pound dollar to come down now. Um, let me see if I can take that. Equilibrium. Rebound right there. You're dead. Go right there. So that's still the plan. I can see pound dollar coming all the way down to at least 1.26. And then it may even come down lower to 1.2. But I don't see it dropping nowhere below 1.22. We may see 1.26. Uh, for high probability, um, coming down to 1.22 would be a low probability. Let's look at the four hour time frame. You see where the swing is at right here at this supply. This is where I'm seeing, this is why I'm seeing pound dropping as we looked at the index already. Okay, um, Australian dollar. I am looking for Australian dollar to do a, a little bit of correction here. You can see how it went down. Right there, went right up to this supply level, and I'm expecting it to come down about right there. Not any lower than that. Well, anywhere between 0.66435, and then we're going higher. Okay, NCD dollar. I'm also bearish on NCD dollar. That was a nice push up. Went right up to a supply level. We are looking to come back down. Um, I doubt if it come that far, but that is the supply level. Let's see the four hour time frame. You see if there's another level in between. That should be. That's what I thought. I'm talking about right there. And then we take off. So with that being said, so pound and CD, uh, pound dollar and NCD dollar, I'm both looking for a temporary bearish pullback and then we're going long, okay? Um, dollar CAD, I'm looking for um, CAD, dollar CAD to push up to about this particular level still. Um, that was a nice little drop. Um, looked like we came in around the equal low. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone that. So we're at that equal low here. It didn't look like it wanted to create a new lower low. So it looked like we got a, a nice little W pattern. And I like to see um, pound uh, dollar CAD come up to about 1.35 and then that's it, we're going down. Right here. Boom, boom, come back and come down. So dollar cat, bullish going up. Uh, dollar switch France, I'm looking for dollar switch France to come up as well with the weakness on switch France expected. This is a nice push down. You can see there's a lot of imbalance that's created as a result of this push down. Introducing pushing all the way down to a nice historical level here. Um, it could It could come down a little bit more but I don't think it's going to come any more than that. And then we're going to be looking for a nice big push. And this, believe it or not, I'm not expecting um, this push up to be because of so much of the dollar swing, but more because of the switch French weakness, right? As a result of that, um, if you look at this equilibrium, we're, we're obviously in a discount location of the pair, right? We didn't get a balance there to 50%. We didn't get a balance there to 50%. So I'm still in the camp of this equilibrium. Tries to be right there. I am expecting some type of pullback or some type, not a pullback, but obviously it's gonna be a bigger than a pullback, but I am expecting this to come way up to about this level, about 9.93. So, Dollar switch friends. And if you wish you would belong here and you hope you got out, or if not, you're in a little bit of drawdown. Right now it's a great opportunity. Right now, I'm like, I'm looking at this darn thing. I'm just want to push by. This is an edge. This is what you were looking for. Um, this is what I would want to trade. If I'm looking at a trade and pair, a dollar pair to trade, 
this is a trade. This is an edge. Uh, this is a, probably the best setup, better than Euro, Pound, CAD, Odd, New Zealand dollar. Switch French dollar is a better setup than all of them. Okay? So I'm like super bullish on on dollar Switch French. Okay, dollar JPY. Um, I am expecting a little bit of pullback. Yep, to about right there. This came all the way down almost. All right, came all the way down to about right there. So that was a nice move. Now I'm expecting this to come up to about right there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clone this swing. So that was a nice little swing. This could come a little bit lower. So keep in mind that dollar uh, yen could come a little bit lower, but I am expecting this to come up to about um, 1.43 and create a lower high, right? This was a nice break of structure. We got that nice equilibrium. That was a nice equilibrium. But the equilibrium is really at this level here, right? You got that nice 50% pullback. That was right here. It came, you can see the swing, hold, swing low right there, swing high right there. And we came all the way to rebalance after it was, um, you know, shifted here. Once it shifted, it's all the way down to the 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 fifty percent here. So I am expecting a little bit of pullback, and you can see once we broke this structure here. Put that. Once we broke that structure, we had a change of character. But however, just, I am expecting a little bit of pullback, and it could go as high as one point. Four, four, but I don't expect to see to take it at that high, right? So therefore, on a higher time frame, it's to be taken um, and creating more of a high, lower low, lower high, and then we're continue to see down. Um, that's but about as high as we are going to go, and I expect a little bit of pullback, and this is going to be more about the dollar strength than it is about the yen weakness. So yen kind of continue to be bullish and strong. But I am expecting a little bit of pullback because of the dollar strength expected to come up with the FOMC rate decision. So um but this was a this was a good you know uh price displacement here and then it broke structure which they confirmed we do have a lower um lower low this is bearish we may see pullback as long as we don't violate this high, we're gonna to continue to see more. So temporary pullback, bullish, and then we are going to be better. All right, all the yen crosses are starting to make their turn. Um, I mean, they're starting to drop now, right? Um, this was that nice drop last week. We got a nice little pullback. So I am expecting to see more, um, business on your JPY. This is going to start to drop and it's going to drop harder, right? And this is going to drop more, and not so much of the pound strength, not the, the yen strength, but more about the, the, the euro weakness, okay? Pound JPY, let's get ready to drop. This is going to be a nice drop. Um, I'm expecting at least 1.70. This is going to continue to drop. We'll continue to look and make um, lower lows. Um, we have not come back and take out that high, which is great. If that was a lower high. We're going to see another lower low, and that's this is going to keep going. So this is great. This, again, this is not so much of the pound strength right now because I do expect the pound to come a little bit weak, hence um, dollar yen. But I do expect the dollar yen to continue to maintain its strength um, it might be a little ranging, so don't expect a drop, uh, a fast drop, but it's definitely going to be a drop over the next few weeks, a month. Let's put it that way. So hold on to those. Cad Yen, this was a nice drop. This is the drop that I've been looking for. Um, I do expect Cad Yen to come up a little bit. 
man, this is a this is the drop that I wish I had on Switch France and Pound Yen. Uh, Switch France Yen and Pound Yen. This was a nice drop we're talking about from this swing high right here. Nice 512, um, 512 pip drop when, you know, we got, well, we got 449. That was a nice drop. But that, from my, from my scaling standpoint, this cat it was even a, it was a nicer drop. All right, odd in. Yep, that's looking good. Nice pullback, lower lows. You can see right here, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Come on, keep dropping. NCD, same difference. All these are starting to turn now. So that was a nice drop. Pull back. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see it keep going. All right. So I'm all bearish on all yen crosses, including Swiss French yen. Even though Swiss French yen is the only one is the most ugliest and stubbornest right now. As you can see, it's basically came up here and this is on the daily chart okay don't think this is a 15 minute or five minute chart this is a daily chart meaning one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen trading days so five days a week we're looking at three weeks of data where price just stuck up here in this high so that means it's it's ranging up to be a big Big fall, to be honest with you. So um, this is one of those frustrating pairs that, you know, it's going to pay itself out. And it's going to look really nice when it drops. Obviously, it came up here, created uh, an equal high, and now it's starting to fall a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. But I am, you know, like I said, I've been bearish on Pound yen for uh, switch French yen for a long time, so I do expect this to come all the way down here over time, over the next few weeks and months. Okay, all the yens are turning around; they're all looking good. They're all creating lower lows and lower highs. They're not taking the previous highs, and that's what we want to see. So they are looking really, really good. Okay, you are on. Uh, this is going to be ranging a little bit, and then. Um, yeah, I'm expecting this to come down. So I'm bearish on your know, odd, pound odd. Um, this is frustrating. Um, we were high. We created a, a, a lower high, came back down, looked like we were getting ready to go low, and then we came back, came equal low, uh, higher low, higher highs. So it's like, come on now. So I am expecting this to be dropping, right? So right now, today, it doesn't look like a good day, right? Because Australia is weak and pounds a little bit strong. So this is looking a little bit bullish. But other than that, um, I am expecting this equilibrium and more all the way down here. So you are odd. Um, pound on, Paris, you are odd. And... Um, your cat and pound cat, I'm going to expect this to be ranging a little bit to bearish. I'm still bearish on, you see this pullback? I was not expecting this pullback to be that far. I knew it was going to pull back, but that's about as far as I would like to, to see it to go, right? We don't want it to take out that high. And then boom, let's wait this lower high. Great. Let's go. Pound cat, same thing. Um, this one even went further, so this kind of created a a new high, which was unexpected. Okay, that's fine. We could supply. Now let's drop. I still got this imbalance. It still needs to get taken out, so I'm expecting pound cat. It's going to be a, a, a pound cat to me. This is going to be a big fall, so I'm expecting this a big fall. Um, this is going to be more about. Um, Pound weakness over the next couple of weeks. Pound has just been bullish, 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 bullish without any chance of rebalancing. 
So it needs a rebalance. So I'm expecting a displacement on here anytime. I'm looking for a break structure. Let me see if I can get a break of structure on a four hour time frame. what that looks like. There you go. I'll break the structure right there. I'm looking for it. that break of structure here at this this weekly supply. When we get that break of structure, this is going to be looking good. She just come down. Okay. Your NCD. All right. We didn't take out that high. We're looking good. Let's go. Come on. NCD is not looking good today because it's it's um, weak, but I am expecting this to drop. Hello now. So this equilibrium from here to here is still available. Um I mean, it's still valid. Let me see if this one, uh, we already, already got that rebalance here. So it's going to be more about this area, this area. So I'm still looking for it to come even even lower than that. So I'm bearish on your NCD, pound NCD. <laughs> yes, I'm bearish, even though we're starting to create, uh, we did create a new high. We're well into the weekly supply from a, from a historical perspective. Um, so weekly supply level, we haven't been as high since, um, you know, 2020 and then again in 2016. So these are really, really high, high probable sell up setups to me. This is a really big deal, um, in terms of a, an edge setup. If you're looking for a trade setup, this is looking to be a nice fall, you know. Um, you see this imbalance here, this is going to drop and it's going to drop and it's going to be more to me, it's going to be more about the pound weakness than it is about the NCD strength. So it's going to be ranging just a little bit and then we expect that to drop. Uh, Cat switch friends. Yep. Um, I'm surprised you didn't go here. Okay, fine. You're at this level. Let's go. So basically come back and get an equal, equal low if you look at it. We're here. We're here. This is an equal low. So what do you expect, right? So I'm bullish on catch which France. Okay, you're a pound. Um, I'm expecting you're a pound to yeah, yeah. this may come back about right here and then come back up here a little bit. So I'm expecting something like this. A little drop to this, this supply level. Come back up to this, I mean, demand level, come back up to the supply level, and then just come back down here. Okay. Or it may, it may, it may range for a little bit, to be honest with you. And that's what this pair does. It does a real good job in ranging a lot. Right? You can tell we've been ranging here. Before we drop. Okay. Pound switch French. Uh, yes, I'm expecting pound switch French to come back down a little bit. Yeah, it might be a little bit more. And then overall, I'm bearish, bullish on, on pounds with French. Uh, I take that back. I'm bearish. Uh, I expect it to come down, then come up. So for the rest of the next two weeks, I'm expecting this to drop pounds with French. And it's going to be they're both going to be weak, but in this particular case, um, I do expect both pound and switch French to be weak. But in this case, the reason why I expect this to go down, I'm expecting pound to be even weaker um, than switch French. Odd CAD, um, oh, that was a nice bounce. Okay, I'm expecting this to come back down. Right. So Odd CAD, I'm bearish. NCD CAD, I'm bearish. That was a nice. Drop from that was a nice push stop. 
for NCD, and that was based on the CAD. It was more about CAD weakness. Now I'm expecting CAD strength to kind of kick in on that. Um, I do expect CAD to be kind of weak, um, but in this particular case, because of the way the structures look, I do expect CAD to pick up a little bit of swing over NCD, so this might be ranging a little bit. Odds with French, okay, I'm expecting odds with French to kick in, going bullish. NCD switch friends. I'm expecting this to be bullish. Odd NCD, uh, a little bit more down. And I'm expecting NCD to come a little bit more down. And then we'll come back up. So I'm bearish. And your switch friends, I am bullish. Okay. That's our currency. And that's our top down. And then um, we'll get into our supply trade. So that is it for the week. I hope you saw some really good setup. I call it some huge edge trades. All the yens are looking bearish, which is great. It's, um, that's going to be bearish now. This is the turnaround we were looking for. Look for a lot of trend line breaks, a lot of lower, lower, lower highs. Dollar, I'm expecting all of these to be bearish as we're looking for a dollar to be strong for the next week or two. Um, all the odd and CAD and stuff like that. I expect all of these to be kind of bearish. I mean, from the euro odd, pound odd, euro CAD, pound CAD, euro NCD, pound NCD. I expect these to be a little bearish. Um, some more than others, like euro odd and pound odd, I expect those to be bearish. Euro CAD and pound CAD, I expect those to drop. Euro NCD and pound NCD, I expect these to even drop even more. And it's all going to be dependent on how strong odd is and NCD is and CAD is versus you and pound. Because you and pound, I expected those to be bearish for the next couple of weeks, if not for the next month. Um, and then we're going to be back on a bull run. Okay. That would be it. And that will conclude our weekly top down analysis.